everyone. Um, today I will be chatting with uh, one of our apprentices who joined Smoothtag about a year ago. He is very talented, hardworking, and also a smart guy. He's passionate about music, also uh, technology. And I just want to chat with him about his experience with Smoothtag, what made him join Smoothtag, and about the whole process that he went through. And now he's all also like during the apprenticeship, uh, he can share his experience with us. Hi, Nolan, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Rufat. Yeah, so I guess I'll go into a, a little bit of my background before coming to Smooth Stack. Um, so I started out, um, when I first moved up to this area, I started out as a pricing analyst um, for Booz Allen Hamilton, and, and then later for another uh, subcontractor. And I was enjoying the work. It was it was nice and everything. Uh, I was getting to teach myself some skills. I ended up um, in order to kind of improve my efficiency um, at my second company, I built a pricing model using uh, VBA, which is Visual Basic for Applications um, in Excel. And that kind of was the first step um, of getting my, my feet wet into coding. Um, you know, I had done some HTML and stuff on MySpace way back in the day when I was like 13. I'm sure a lot of you guys have. But um, yeah, as far as professionally um, goes, I, I started with VBA and uh, realized that you could do so much more with coding. Um, and that really became the focus of what I wanted to do. Like all the other parts of my day, <laughs> the other work items I had, I had less interest in than actually just working on this pricing model I got to build myself. So um, I recognized that I had a passion for that and um, ultimately decided to make a career change um, from there. And um, a friend of mine kind of got me started with web development. We started working on a couple little side projects together, um, just pursuing like hobbies, um, little side like interests. Um, so I play music, um, in a few bands and um, write songs on guitar and stuff like that. So um, we ended up creating like this virtual guitar fretboard uh, just for the fun and for the learning of it. So started to learn a little bit of JavaScript um, and TypeScript, um, just just a little bit right, right then and there. Um, and realized the next step was either to go back to school and get a formal education or um, or possibly try one of these web development boot camps. So um, I went into one of those, the, chose the latter, and uh, joined George Washington University's web boot camp uh, and learned a lot there for sure. Um, but uh, after coming out of that, I found that, you know, even though I had learned a lot about SQL and Mongo database and all the other like React and um, Handlebars and all of this other technology related to web development. Uh, it was still pretty tough finding jobs out there, especially in this area. And what do you um, think was the main challenge for you, like as a career changer to mm -hmm. break into tech industry or land a job? What do you think was the main challenge? I think it's just a lot of, uh, a lot of self-motivation that you need. Um, Coming from pricing analyst, uh, a pricing analyst position that was very deadline driven, and so it it lit a fire under you. Kind of, um, it was always kind of an urgent panic situation at that company. So it's easy to, or at least I found that it was easy to, you know, be diligent and hyper efficient and stuff when I was constantly under that pressure. But once you're taken away from that. And you're, you know, in the middle of a career change, you know, I was working uh, a few hours a week at a coffee shop and everything, but kind of just biding my time until the next opportunity. And um, it, it was a lot of recognizing, you know, what I didn't know yet, what I needed to focus on, which areas, even after coming out of the web development boot camp, um, where I lacked um, certain knowledge areas and seeing like what was appearing on a lot of resumes or not resumes on a lot of um, 
you know, job profiles uh, or skills that you would need. And that, that's the tricky thing as well is, uh, you know, you'll find that um, a lot of people in HR might not know in particular which skills are truly necessary. So they'll just throw in this big list of a bunch of different coding skills and everything. So that finding also like an avenue of what to go down, because it's easy to come out of one of those boot camps and just be like, oh my gosh, I know nothing. There's like Swift and R and a billion other languages, you know, um, that you could go down, um, but just trying to find the right avenue towards what job you're going for. Um, so and how did you find about Smoothstack? So Smoothstack, I actually had recommended to me, thankfully, from another friend who was in um, the web development boot camp with me. Um, so he, he kind of uh, gave me some background information on it. And then I got in contact with um, Bob there. And, um, you know, I'd spoken to, I was searching for a decent while. I was working um, as a teaching assistant at the web development boot camp after I graduated. Um, but not full time. So, you know, I was still definitely looking for something full time. And um, there were some other competitors to Smoothstack that operate, I think, more nationwide um, that could place you basically anywhere in the country and you would have no real way of knowing where you would have, you know, where you would end up. Um, so I'd gotten a couple offers from those types of uh, uh, job placement opportunities before, but um, the salary was also low. The location was a big factor, and Smoothstack just seemed like um, the best option out of uh, out of all of those right from the get go. So, cool. kind of what got me invested. And you started the training portion of the apprenticeship program. Can you just share your experience? What exactly you learned there, and what made you successful during the training? Sure, yeah. So um, getting started with Smoothstack, uh, talking about not having certain knowledge areas under your belt, um, I knew that object-oriented programming was definitely something I lacked. And so even, uh, you know, during the placement interview, um, I realized I had to study up quite a bit for that. So um, Bob was helpful enough to give me a few pointers on some things that I might need to to bone up on. Um, so I just studied as much as I could on the basics um, in order to get through. And then from there, once I was in the training program, um, kind of just tried to apply as much as I could from my JavaScript background to what we were learning. Um, so I, I think our first test was a um, SQL database library um, simulation, I guess you want to say. Um, and we were kind of free to choose our language. Um, and a lot of people were taking different routes, learning or picking up some basics of Python and whatnot. And I just decided to write mine in like a Node.js script. Um, and anyways, uh, barring all of that, basically just just trying to flex what I already knew um, and apply it whenever I could um, but also uh, once we made it through that uh, once the actual training began um, we started to learn a lot more about dynamics we learned um, some essentials of react and furthermore uh, react redux which was new for me in particular redux um, but kind of came pretty easily um, coming from a React background. Um, also learned a lot of C-sharp, so uh, for the plugin side of things with Dynamics, um, which was cool. And I learned that object-oriented uh, debugging is a lot simpler <laughs> <laughs> than in JavaScript, which, which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, those were some of the essentials. I think the major component was just learning kind of the ins and outs of of uh, the Dynamics platform. Uh, cool. And I'll give a little background, like when uh, Nolan uh, finished his training and he uh, started working with uh, one of our main partners 
Accenture Federal Services. And I would like you to talk about your current role, what are you working on and what's your role about? Sure. Yeah, so right now I'm part of the um, TMT team. So that's task management tool for AFS. Um, we are, uh, me and a few others um, are sort of on the front end side of things. So thankfully, you know, we, we had pretty extensive interview, interview process with AFS and they got to know um, through SmoothStack you know, communicating this with them, um, what my background was, where I was most comfortable or, or where I had most knowledge versus um, uh, Robert, who is also on the TMT team now, um, who is joining with me. Um, and he was coming much more from the C-sharp um, plug-in side of things. He, he was much more familiar there. So um, thankfully they, they, you know, recognized where our strengths lied and placed us appropriately. So um, he is dealing with more plug-in work and I'm, uh, uh, basically primarily working in React, um, uh, these days, although I'm dipping my toes more and more into some of the dynamic side, um, as it gets necessary, but, um, yeah, mostly, mostly just working on kind of a UI overhaul of one of the main features of the task management tool right now. We have, like, we actually just had our, um, first release of that new like fresh coat of paint and we'll be um, releasing the second release pretty soon. That is awesome. I'm, I think it's really important to um, work on something that you are really passionate about. And I'm glad that it turned out this way in your case that they let you to do what exactly you want to do, right? Now you can even consider yourself like as front end developer more, more react developer. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't, I guess I don't have an official, title from them but but yeah primarily a react developer and uh i know i was talking to my friend who i started out with the little guitar project on like dude you have a <laughs> fully remote position i mean kind of everything's fully remote uh nowadays but um it's regardless of the pandemic uh permanently full remote position and i'm doing react you know i'm, I'm in the <laughs> band that I was aiming for from the get-go. So uh, I think right. it worked out pretty well. Speaking of pandemic, I know that you started working with AFS mm -hmm. right in the middle of pandemic, just started like, and you started your job, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of tricky joining. This was my first uh, position that I'd had totally remote, but um, it, it went pretty smoothly. I think we had some like technical hip hiccups um, from the get go, but that gave us um, some additional time to just study for for like half a sprint or so um, to just get familiarized with the task management tool itself. Um, maybe catch up on some things that you know we had gone through um, the training in, on dynamics with Smoothstack, but just things that you know maybe got lost in the wayside or, or you might have forgotten about, you could go back and refresh yourself on in the meantime. So that was sort of nice. And um, yeah, you know, it, it was just sort of a slow roll. It was, you know, I was kind of daunted by the idea of actually having a developer position and like, how, how does the workflow work and everything? Like how, how do we coordinate? But um, it all came pretty smoothly. We were working with um, Azure DevOps and, um, I don't know. Yeah, it, 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 no major, no major issues there. Cool. And how prepared you felt after the training, right before you started your position? I felt pretty comfortable. Um, yeah, I, I think the hardest part going into Accenture was just recognizing the overall structure of how things work, specific to the task management tool. So um, the structure of the code base and things like that um, more so than anything like technical, I guess. Cool. What do you think? Um, I just want to ask you to share some of some tips that really helped you during training. Also mm -hmm. during your overall apprenticeship journey, what do you would 
what kind of advice you would give to the trainees or career changers uh, or early career tech talent when they're looking for jobs or when once they're in smooth tech program, what will be what will be uh, what will make them successful like you? Yeah, sure. Um, well, like I said before, like recognizing your areas that you lack knowledge in, I think is really important. Like uh, basically just kind of be a, be a perfectionist about, about that sort of thing. Like if you don't know something, uh, whether you are nervous about like uh, not knowing, not picking up on something during your, during your smooth stack training or, or you're worried that you have forgotten some things afterwards or something like that. Like YouTube is, is out there. Google is always out there. There are great tutorials for, for basically anything, as long as you know what you need to go and learn. You know? um, and aside from that, just being diligent and, and being self-motivated to, to learn whatever, or if you're working on a particular project during your smooth stack training or something, not letting yourself just be satisfied with like, this is passable uh, <laughs> as a piece of work, but like, you know, kind of critique yourself and, and make something as good as it can be. I know I was super nervous about the initial library project that we were working on. And I, I think I was in the smooth stack offices till 4 a.m. for just a couple nights uh, alone, <laughs> trying to make sure nothing broke because I wasn't sure exactly how much, you know, this would make or break me um, entering the program. So, you know, just being, just being really diligent about, about how good your work is, I, I think. Not, I mean, not, not that you shouldn't be unsatisfied with your work or anything but just strive for for the best you can do cool that's really great and i also know that you are very passionate about music and i can't wait to see some of your live performances when things yeah. go back to normal can you tell <laughs> us more about that what are you working on now uh sure yeah so we uh <laughs> one of my bands just dropped our first single back in uh december that we recorded way back in January of last year, um, and yeah, it's been kind of hard to, to, you know, work on stuff without having live performances to, to look forward to, but um, we should be picking up, you know, whenever this is over um, pretty soon again. And, uh, yeah, I, I still continue to, to mess around with the little guitar side project just for the fun of it, and refresh yourself on extra technologies. You know, there's always like, even if you have the basics of a technology down, there's always new libraries you can look into adding to your projects and everything, um, just to familiarize yourself. Um, so we just like worked on a little rainbow mode on, on our website mm -hmm. and everything, uh, little, little stuff like that where I can find the time um, between jobs. And yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know, I still record, um, music just here in the little makeshift studio I have for myself uh, in the bedroom. But yeah, so we'll great. get back out there. That's great. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Nolan, for answering my questions. Thank you for the tips. And it's always good to see you. And you. if people who are watching this, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll make sure to ask these questions to the next person in the next video, probably. <laughs> or if you have any specific question for Nolan, uh, feel free to do that also. Thank you, Nolan. It's good to Thanks. see you. Thank you for joining me today. See you, Bye. Bye.